Hello, I'm Data, and today I have for you a two-wide tileable shulker box splitter that splits all stackable items based around some two-wide tileable item defraggers I designed while working with, my, with Metamilo and Rapscallion to improve our hopper speed multi-item sorter. In front of me is one of the two-wide slices. In case you aren't familiar with shulker box splitting already, the goal of a shulker box splitter is to separate and defragment the unique item types of a single mixed item shulker box into multiple single item shulker boxes. In practice, what this means is that you can input a shulker box that will look like this. So it can have fragmented stacks of 64 stackable items and 16 stackable items, as well as single 16 stackable items and uh, single and 64 stackable items, and the ideal, as well as some non-stackable items. And the ideal shulker box splitter will give you an output that looks like this. So in one stackable item stream, we receive unique shulker boxes for each item type that was present in the input shulker box. So as you can see here, in these shulker boxes, there's only one item type per shulker box, and none of the item types across the shulker boxes are the same. And in a second item stream, we get all of the non-stackable contents of the uh, original shulker box, as well as the original shulker box itself. Now that we're a little bit familiar with shulker box splitters, Let's take this input shulker box and see what our splitter will give us. Now, if I look in this filter hopper here, as you can see, it's currently defragmenting the white concrete, and we have a little bit of space in between item types, and that space is exactly six game ticks. And if I'm able to catch it in time, uh, so once the ender pearls are done, you'll see that it'll break it just before our in the same moment that it receives the last item. So now let's check these output streams. Sorry, that was a little bit quick. As you can see, we have one snowball, eight white concrete, eight honey bottles, one orange concrete, four magenta concrete, and 16 ender pearls. And if we look in this non-stackable stream, we have our non-stackable item, which was the cake, as well as the original empty shulker box, or the original input shulker box. I have a few more edge cases set up over here. So what will happen if you input an empty shulker box into the splitter? What will happen if you input a shulker box with only a single item? What will happen if you input a shulker box that has a bunch of non-stackable items and then ends on, in, ends on a single item? What happens if you put a shulker box that has the filter item within it? as well as what happens if you just put a whole bunch of these single item types. So if I copy the MBT data of all of these, let's have a look. So this is the empty shulker box. So as you can see, we, uh, we dealt with the empty shulker box and more importantly, we didn't get any extra shulker boxes over here and we just got the empty box uh, in the non-stackable stream. Now let's try the uh, single single item. So let's have a look. So we got our one white concrete here, as well as the uh, empty input shulker box. Now uh, I'm going to, uh, now let's test the uh, trailing trailing single item. So if we do this, all right. So we got our one orange concrete, as well as all of our cakes and the original empty shulker box. Now I'm going to input the box with the filter item. And once this locks, I'm also going to show an extra edge case. So there's a potential input edge case wherein this hopper will immediately pick up a shulker box once the operation is done. So I'm just going to leave the blue box to simulate there. So as you can see, we're filtering out the filter item. And if I look in the loading box here, I'll try and show you the, uh, the breaking again. So same tick that it gets the last item, it'll break. And uh, now we're working on the blue shulker box as well. So as you can see, we have our 64 filter items, our brown shulker box, our blue shulker box, as well as all of the single item types in the blue shulker box. 
I would also like to give a proof of tile ability. So here I have six splitters tiled together, and in each of them I will be inputting this black shulker box here. Now I'm going to save you a little bit of hassle. So there are nine different, I nine different stackable item types in this black shulker box, as well as three non-stackable items. And I've gone ahead and color-coded each of the tiles. So what we should expect in the output stream is uh, six sets of nine shulker boxes each, and within each set of shulker boxes, we should only have a single item type per shulker box. And then in this uh, non-stackable uh, non output here, we should expect to see 24 different non-stackable items. All right, so I'm going to copy this six times, and we're just going to start inputting. Now, a couple of notes on your input system. You have to wait 32 game ticks before inputting in your next shulker box, because it takes 32 game ticks to lock this hopper. And uh, the method that I'm using to input these shulker boxes right now is I'm just waiting to see when that observer goes up. And the last one. All right, so now we are sorting at 6x hopper speed in parallel. Uh, now a few notes on tile ability. You have to switch rail types every tile uh, on the bottom right here, as well as the top left. And you also need to ensure that you have these tripwire hooks here. These can also be buttons or lever or anything that is transparent and redirects redstone dust except for an observer. And the reason that you have to do that is that this dust can power this dispenser in the wrong moment, and for some odd reason, it can leave this dispenser butted. Uh, I'm not really sure why that happens, but it's uh, something I ran into. A few other notes on tileability. Um, let's see. Ah, right. So down here, these barrels are filled with two two stacks of items, uh, and. And on the very last tile, you have to uh, come out an extra block and put in an extra barrel with two stacks of items. And the reason that we're doing that is that we are trying to output signal strength too. You can also use a furnace, or maybe uh, you might be able to use a dropper as well. No, you can't use a dropper. Um, but you can use uh, any other inventory that uh, one won't change its inventory if it gets powered, and two, it will. Uh, uh, is able to be strong power, strongly powered because if we look on the side here, we have some redstone dust here. And uh, I believe that's almost, oh right, one more thing. Uh, we are actually using observer redirection here to essentially make a tileable knot gate. And uh, this isn't really uh, all that particular, but it might be something that uh, is useful to you. So observers will only redirect redstone dust on, on one side and not on the other side. And uh, another thing, so if you wanted to add on to the system, so let's say uh, I have a set of empty shulker boxes and I'm starting to run low and I want to lock all my inputs so that I don't start splitting when I don't have empty shulker boxes uh, available. Uh, you can set that up pretty easily. You have a lot of space on this right side here to uh, essentially like just put a repeater here that will end up locking the input hopper. And if we go back to the left side here, uh, it looks like we're about to finish up uh, all the tiling as well, or all the sorting as well. If we come out to the left side here, you can actually use this redstone dust. And if you power a block and then get a repeater output uh, like this, then you can also know the current speed of your sorting. So if this repeater is off, then that means we're sorting at one x hopper speed. And if multiple repeaters are off, then we're sorting at uh, that how many repeaters are off uh, hopper speed. Now, now that we've uh, finished sorting, let's have a look. So as we can see, we have, uh, I'll let you count this, but there should be not uh, six different colors of shulker boxes. And within each of those colors, there are uh, nine nine shulker boxes and within each of those shulker boxes is a unique item type and i'll just scroll through here if you want to verify for yourself okay and if we look in the non-stackable stream so here we have our 
24 non-stackable items. So we have the six sets of three non-stackables, which are representative of the non-stackable contents of our input shulker boxes, as well as our six original, sh uh, original input shulker boxes. So before I go on to a redstone explanation of what's happening inside the splitter, I just want to show off two more designs that I had made um, that are technically smaller. However, they don't they aren't able to handle an empty shulker box that is uh, that would be inputted into the splitter here. Now, this one on the left should work in theory. However, it appears to be locational due to the hopper update order. So in fact, it doesn't actually work in this location here. Uh, but uh, if it did work, it would have a four game tick transition delay, which would make it uh, a little bit faster than the design I showed at the start of the video. And I can just show you here that you know, we are getting, uh, as you can see, in two boxes, we got the same item type. So we're not actually defragmenting the boxes. So as you can see, we just got two boxes with honey bottles in them. So this one here on the left doesn't actually work. And I think it has to do with hopper update order. However, this one here on the right does actually work. And this here actually uses the item defragger that Rapscallion showed in his video. And I can show you it working just like this. Uh, so one uh, downside of this system is that it can get kind of noisy with the trapdoor sounds here, but I currently have my sounds muted, so you won't actually hear the trapdoor. Uh, but the other uh, downside is that it has a 14 game tick transition delay. So if we switch item types here, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of, there's a little, actually I'll just run it again so that way we can actually see it. So we have a, a, a little bit longer of a space between uh, uh, sorting items. Uh, however, this is uh, two blocks shorter. And if you are already pre-sorting and basically filtering out your empty shulker boxes, then this might be the option for you. To perform shulker box splitting, you have to perform two operations beforehand. You have to perform item defragmentation and item gating. So what is item defragmentation? Item defragmentation is that we have these fragments, so these two half stacks, and we just want to put them together into a full stack. And item gating is that we have these uh, items that are uh, separated here, and we just want to add a little bit of time delay in between these item types. So we have our granite, and then a after a little bit of time, we get our warped stem. After a little bit of time, we get our granite. After a little bit of time, we get our oak log. Now, technically, you can do these two operations independent of each other and then uh, combine the outputs to get a splitter, but there's already a single device that already does both of these operations, and that is a loaded variable sorter. So we'll be using a loaded variable sorter to make our splitter. Now, your typical variable sorter has a little bit of a problem, and that's the problem is, is that it groups 16 stackable items with non-stackable items as opposed to grouping 16 stackable items with 64 stackable items. So I'm going to show you what I mean here. So we get, this is the behavior that we get with 64 stackable items. We'll get one item, then we'll get another item, and then this would be our uh, item stream until we have some trigger pulse that will reset the, uh, reset the variable sorter. But if I try to do this with 16 stackable items, as you can see, it'll just draw it, draw it out immediately. Now, uh, that won't really work for our purposes, and I can also just show you it works the same as a cake. And that won't work for our purposes because now we have a whole lot of edge cases that we have to deal with because we essentially have to deal with twice the amount of edge cases if we're also trying to sort 16 stackable items. So what we do instead is we use a self-resetting variable sorter. Now, how do you make a self-resetting variable sorter? Well, you just add an extra item to the filter items here. And the way that this works is that now every single item type will just be drawn out. And this means that all items are treated the exact same. But now you might be thinking, well, this is just the exact same thing as a hopper. Well, not exactly. The way that we get around this essentially being the exact same thing as a hopper is that we use this dropper hopper combo here to get asynchronous delay between inputting and outputting items. So. If we input our items, what will happen is that we will actually input two carrots, and then we're able to keep the chain going. So if you're looking, if I can do this correctly, 
is, as you can see here, we're just flipping between two and one, and then when we're done, we go back down to zero. And we can do the same thing with ender pearls. So if I can show you the number there, there you go. We just flip between two and one until we're out, and then we flip straight back down to zero. And with the cake, obviously you can't stack cakes, so the cake will just go down. Now, self-resetting variable sorters have their own problem. And that problem is it groups all of the item types all together. So we'll be getting 60, uh, sorry, we'll be getting unstackable items in shulker boxes. And that's pretty much just a waste of a shulker box. So what can we do to separate these non-stackable items from our stackable items? Well, we can just use your standard non-stackable item filter. So I can just show you that this works. If I put a cake in here, we'll, uh, we'll actually get our cake in this hopper. If I put in a carrot, Oh, <laughs> not like that. If I put in a carrot, we'll get a carrot on the output here, and the ender pearl will act the same as a carrot. Now, what this allows us to do is that all of our stackable items will uh, have the exact same behavior, and our non-stackable items will be separated from our item stream relatively quickly. Now, I'm not sure what the best way to explain and show you how, how we get the delay between item types, so I'm going to try and use this diagram. So the standard state of a sorter, of an unmapped sorter, is this. So we have our uh, sucking hopper, and this sucking hopper will be locked by our item filter. And this hopper here will be unlocked, because it's trying to check in the shulker box for an item type. And when we receive an item type, what will happen is that this hopper will go into cooldown, and then it will go off cooldown and go into cooldown again. So it sucked two items from here, and now this hopper gets unlocked, and now this hopper goes into cooldown. And essentially now these two hoppers are synced, so they'll uh, be fine. And essentially they'll just pull one item out at a time. Now we get to the last item. So this hopper is going to go out of cooldown, but it won't re-enter cooldown, because it won't be able to pull another, another item from this shulker box. Then this hopper is going to go out of cooldown, and then this hopper is immediately going to pull out another item, going to cool down. And then once this uh, comes back off of cooldown, it's going to pull that item. And now our hoppers are out of sync, uh, are out of sync with one another. Or uh, I guess this would be the better way of showing it. So the way that we mitigate this problem is that we force a clock signal onto this filter hopper here. So what would that look like? So let me just reset to the original state. We go hopper cooldown, second hopper cooldown. Now we turn off this clock, and now these two are synced. And now we're down to our last item. What we do is we just power this in during the time when it's supposed to be in cooldown. So we're in our last item. It's fine because our hopper is still powered here. Then this is going to come off cooldown. Our signal strength is going to decrease. We're going to relock this hopper. And then we're going to end up unlocking this hopper because the clock signal will eventually disappear. We're going to pull a new item, go into cooldown, uh, go into cooldown again, pull two items, then unlock this, then this will go into cooldown, and now we're in sync again. And that's how we're able to uh, enforce a transition delay between item types. Hopefully I explained that well. <laughs> And if we put our unstackable filter, our self-resetting variable sorter, as well as uh, our clock signal here, we get a full item defragmentation device. And this is essentially just a mirror image as well as the added unstackable item sorter to the item defragger that RepScouting showed in his video uh, about a week ago. So we looked at the redstone theory. Now let's see what it looks like in practice. So here we have our item defragmenter circuit and our unstackable item sorter at the bottom here. Looks like I did not clean this up. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, going back, we have our item defragger here, as well as our unstackable item filter, as we had just seen. So this here will separate our stackable items from our non-stackable items and allow us to have a little bit of transition delay. Over here, we just have a little signal flow and which has just the right timing, such that it will uh, break the shulker box in the moment that the last, the last item of a certain item type has just flown in to the shulker box. 
And over here, we have a little update priority clock thing that will keep this hopper locked so long as the system is active. And this comparator here just is a little initializer circuit for this dispenser. Now, the slightly larger version that can handle empty boxes works in the exact same way, except it uses a slightly different item defragger that instead of operating on a four game tick clock, uh, sorry, on a four game tick clock operates on an eight game tick clock. And it uh, has a little bit of extra logic to handle an empty shulker box input. And that concludes my video on an ideal output shulker box splitter. Sorry if I seemed really disjunct throughout the video, I haven't found a lot of time to record this video, which is also partially the cause of the delay on this video, so I've been recording it at odd hours and not in a single sitting either, so my brain is, quite frankly, uh, only half working. <laughs> I'd also like to mention that I've uh, helped set up a dedicated storage tech discord, so if you're interested in the storage tech, I highly recommend that you join. We've already hit 200 members and we're growing day by day, and I'm really excited for what's to come. Anyhow, if you have any questions or would like access to the world download, I have a public Discord whose invite is available in the description. It's just a whole lot easier for me to hop into a voice chat to debug and likely a lot more useful to you to get a direct answer to your questions. And uh, finally, before I end off, I just want to thank uh, Repscowing and Metamilo. Uh, we had a giant, um, I guess, sort of collaboration session where we were just working on uh, item defraggers, and I'll be including videos on the hopper, the hopper speed multi-item sorter, as well as some, of, as well as a really simple uh, item defragger that Meta Milo made, uh, in the description. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say, so I hope you have a great day, and take care. Bye bye.